Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on exploring input and output on a Casio Classwiz FX991CW. We're going to be exploring how the different input and output options on a Casio Classwiz FX991CW affect the way your answer appears. And we're going to be using the examples here to highlight the differences in the way that the answer is presented. In Calculate, we're going to go to Settings, then Calc Settings, and then the top option here, Input Output. We have four different available options here for us to determine how we input information into the calculator and how it initially gets displayed as the answer. We have Math Input, Math Output, Math Input, Decimal Output, Line Input, Line Output, and line input and decimal output. And in this video, we're going to explore what the differences are and what option you might prefer for the sort of work that you're doing with your calculator. We're going to start with the initial option here, Math I, Math O, which is the default option after you reset your calculator. Here at the top, you can see a symbol, a square root with what looks like a, a little pen going to write something inside it, which indicates that you have Math input activated. What that essentially means is that you can input things as close to a textbook display as the calculator will allow. And that primarily means fractions, essentially. A fraction will be able to appear as a numerator over a denominator. So if you press the fraction button, you can see here that it's prompting you to input a numerator and then we can navigate down to the bottom and write our denominator in. Let's input our first example here. This is actually the area of a semicircle with a radius of six, pi times six squared over two. And let's press execute. Now the answer is initially displayed in terms of pi, 18 pi, this is an exact answer. And the calculator refers to this as a standard answer. So if you see the word standard, in the format menu that refers to these exact answers if it's possible for the calculator to display it as such. And in this case it's 18 pi. Now that could be the answer that you're looking for, but perhaps you're looking for the decimal equivalent or the decimal approximation. So we would go to format, select decimal and press OK. And here we have the decimal equivalent 56.548 and so on. Let's explore a second example here. Here we have a third or radical example. 18 plus 12 square root 2 over 3. Press execute and the calculator has simplified that third for us. 6 plus 4 square root 2. Again it's given as an exact answer, a standard answer because we had math output selected from the input output menu. If we want the decimal answer go to format and select decimal, and here we have the decimal approximation. Incidentally, let's just rewind a moment, go back to just before we pressed execute to process our answer. Now there is a way of being able to get the decimal approximation straight away, even though we have math output selected, and that is to do the approximately equal function. So shift, and then you can see here with execute, you've got an approximately equal sign, and that gives you the decimal approximation straight away. Now you have to be careful using that, particularly if you use the ANTS feature, because it will reprocess your calculation again if you do shift and then approximately equal to after you've already executed your answer. The slightly preferred option would be to use format and change the decimal. Let's change to the second option in the input output menu. So it's settings, calc settings, input output and then we want math input and decimal output. Now I find the quickest way again to return to the input screen is to press AC. Comment below if you have a different way. You can exit out of it but I find the quickest way is to press AC. Notice how the math input sign here at the top is still active. We can still press the fraction button and have a numerator and denominator. Let's try a semicircular area pi times 6 squared over 2, and this time in the first instance we have the decimal approximation first, 56.54 and so on. If we wanted to get the exact answer, the standard answer, format and select standard, 
and then we have 18 pi. Let's try that once again with the third example. 18 plus 12 root 2 over 3. 11.65, the decimal approximation first, format and standard to get the third or the exact answer. Just incidentally, I am using simple examples here. These, of course, would be the equivalent of your answers if you had done a calculation, such as an add or a multiply. You would get the decimal answer first and then use format to get the exact answer. Those top two options in the input-output menu are just the inverses of each other. So it really just depends on which you would prefer to have first as your initial answer. Do you want the decimal approximation first because that's more useful to you? Change to the standard or the exact answer if needed. Or would you prefer to have the exact answer first, the standard answer, and then change to the decimal if needed? I note that a lot of people who watch the Calculator Guide videos like to have the decimal answer first. So maybe you want to choose that second option, math input decimal output, in order that the decimal approximation appears first is your initial answer and then press format if you need your answer in a different format. Back to settings, calc settings and input output. So our third option here is line input, line output. Let's have a look at what that involves. Now if we're going to input the fraction here with the semicircular area, I would recommend using brackets and I will show you why with the second example in just a moment. So brackets around the numerator, pi times 6 squared, close your brackets or parentheses, press the fraction button. You can see here in the line input it appears as a sort of a backwards capital L that represents the vinculum of the fraction the line that separates the numerator and the denominator all your input is essentially on one single line hence the name line input that was over two press execute and we've got a line output here if you have line output selected and you have an answer which could be given as an exact answer in the math output it will only display as a decimal now so we can only get the 56.54 decimal equivalent even if we select standard here it's still giving us the decimal answer why because it's only a linear output so it, we need to have that math output to be able to display uh, an exact answer which could be a fraction it could be with pi or square root. So we need that math output to be able to display that. In this particular example, it didn't actually matter that we put the brackets in this example. So if I inputted say pi times six squared over two, I've still got the same answer, but that's just because of the nature of the calculation that we've got here in this first example, it works. But with the second example, I'm going to show you how it's important to put the brackets around. Otherwise, we're going to get different answers, essentially the, an incorrect answer. So let's start off with the correct way of inputting it. In brackets, 18 plus 12 square root. Notice how the square root already opens up another set of brackets for what you input inside the square root. It's not as easy for the calculator to recognize that. So we're going to have to close two sets of brackets here one for the two of the square root, and then one for the top of the fraction. So the numerator, fraction button, and then over three, press execute. And remember, this is the correct decimal approximation for our calculation here, 11.65 and so on. Now let's see what happens. Firstly, if we forget the second bracket there, so I haven't put the bracket around the numerator, I have around the square root there, so that's definitely 12 square root two but then I press the fraction button and input three. Press execute, and we've got a completely different answer here, 23.65 and so on. Now what's happened is the calculator has recognized this as what's written here, 18 plus 12 square root two, and just that second part, that second term, over three. And it's given that answer. So you can see the importance of being able to tell the calculators by using the brackets if you have a line display on there. Much, much clearer with the math input rather than the line input. Let's have a look again at what's happened here where we forget to do both sets of brackets. So 18 plus 12 square root two. I forget the brackets here, fraction button over three, and we've got another answer, a different answer. This is displaying the answer as it's written here instead which is 18 plus square root, and then inside the square root, two thirds, two over three. 
and that would give you this particular answer. So it's very, very important that you use brackets and you make sure you know how your calculation should be set up if you're using line input. Let's take a look at the difference between having line output and then the fourth option, which will be decimal output. I'm just going to use a simple improper fraction to display this. So if we input uh, 15 over 10 and press execute, so this is with line output, we do actually get a fraction in the first instance. It's just displayed in a linear way. So three over two, it's an improper fraction that would be determined by fraction result from the calc settings. And if I wanted the decimal version of the answer, I'd go to format and press decimal. Here we've got 1.5. So if we have a look at the final option in settings, calc settings, input, output, line input, decimal output, and just input the same fraction here. You can see the difference here. We, we're just getting the decimal equivalent first, 1.5. If we want the fraction result, we can press format. And just pausing here, we can see that we can have an option on either an improper fraction or a mixed fraction. I'm just going to choose standard. The fraction result I have my calculator set to is improper fraction, so it will give it as an improper fraction three over two. So the difference between the third option and the fourth option in input output is just typically how it might display fraction results. Remember more complex exact answers, such as those involving pi and, and square roots, will just display as the decimal approximations straight away. So there we go, the four different options available in input output and how they affect the way that the calculator gives you the answer. Now, my preferred setting in this, if I return to it, is math input, math output, because I'm able to input all my calculations similar to how it might be presented in a textbook or in an exam paper, and then I get the standard result, the exact answer first, and if I need the decimal, I can just press the format button and select decimal. Comment below which input output selection you prefer. I know many of you prefer to have the decimal option first, so maybe that second option will be the one that you go for. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.